have the four honeycomb coaster molds and we have the holder mold and of course my part A craft smart resin and the part B hardener my large measuring cup I'm using three colors so I'm going to mix in three small cups I of course need my stir sticks and we need our nitro gloves and because we're talking bees I'm going to be using the Let's Resin black mica powder I'm going to be using the Eye Candy Aura Gold, the Eye Candy Sheba, Sheba, yeah, Sheba Gold, and to paint the gold on the bumblebee, I'm going to be using these eyeshadow brushes. One, I just need one. I am adding 80 milliliters of the Part B resin and someone asked why do I do B first and I do B first simply because it's heavier Okay, then there's 80 of part A, 80 milliliters. You should mix your resin according to the instructions that the manufacturer sets out. Some resins are a two to one ratio. This Craftmart resin happens to be a one to one ratio. Uh, and you have to check the time because each manufacturer has a different amount of time that they need you to mix their resin. Craftmart says five minutes. So that's what we'll do, five minutes. And when you stir your resin, be careful not to just stir in a circle like this, because when you stir in a circle, you leave the resin in the middle, not mixed. So you wanna make sure you're going side to side, back and forth, making sure that you're scraping the sides of the container, making sure that you're scraping the bottom of the container. And I always make sure that I scrape any resin off the sides of my stir stick. So five minutes. So now I'm going to divide my resin into three cups, uh, pretty much equal amounts, but serve, saving some, I'm reserving some so that I have some clear to pour in to the molds to have some negative space. I like negative space. see that I have uh, about 50 milliliters left in that cup. So 
I'm going to start with the Sheba, Sheba Gold, and I'm going to put, uh, oh, that's pretty. Boy, that's pretty. And we're going to mix that. And same thing with mixing your resin. Do not stir just in a circle like that because what's in the middle does not get mixed. Make sure that you are rubbing your stir stick along the sides to scrape off any resin, any mica powder. I'm sorry. Be sure you're scraping the sides to get all of the mica powder. And then you'll notice that there's actually mica powder on the stir stick. So you want to rub your cup to get that mica powder off your stir stick. Make sure you use all of it. That's the darker Sheba Gold. And then we're going to do a lighter Aura Gold. And these are so sparkly. And of course, the more mica powder you add, the darker the color. it's all thoroughly mixed. I think you can see the difference in those two. And then last but not least, we're going to do the Let's Resin Black. This black is really almost a charcoal. Um, it's not a black black, it's a, a charcoal black. So we'll set those aside for the moment. And then this mold has a bumblebee on it. And so what we're going to do is we are going to to take this Sheba Gold and I'm going to use this eyeshadow sponge and I'm going to carefully paint Oops. I'm going to paint this bumblebee Bags are very difficult to work with. I prefer to have my resin in a, a container, in a bottle.
when you finish doing this, you can see there's some mica powder that's spilt on the sides. Always just turn this over and just tap. Little bits that are spilt ah, are not that real significant because again, when you pour your resin on, it's going to make it look more natural. And if you're really worried, you can wipe some of that out of there. But we're not going to. So we're going to put our molds out here. I'm just going to randomly start pouring. I don't know if you can see. There is a bumblebee, a bumblebee, and a little honeycomb right there. So I'm going to pour gold on each of the bees. I'll be pouring gold on the bees and on that honeycomb. space. A little more of this clear resin to my goals. I want more gold. I need more for the
And anyone who's ever watched any of my videos knows that this table is not level. And I always have to go back once I pull, well I should do it before I start. And sometimes I forget, depends on what I'm doing. But I go back in and I add a couple of sticks underneath these to level them off. And they're off just by a stir stick. Never use a torch. A torch will burn and ruin your molds. And be very careful with your heat gun. Too much heat from the heat gun. Too much heat from the heat gun will also ruin your molds. When you are online, you'll see a lot of people using alcohol. They spray their molds with alcohol. I don't do that because my alcohol is 91% isopropyl alcohol, which means 9% of this is water. So I don't spray because I don't want any additional moisture added into my molds. So they have been gone over with the heat gun. And now we just cover and allow to cure overnight. I have some yellow glass, some gold glass, and I decided to drop that into that negative into that clear just to give it a little teeny bit of bling. Okay, so this is the next day. Let's take this off of here. And this is the part of the process that most artists enjoy the most, and that is the unmolding to see whether or not what you created is what you think you created. If it turns out the way you want, um, that looks okay. So let's try unmolding these. And it's always that reveal where you turn it over and see if the back side looks the same, it's the way you want it. Okay, well that shimmery gold is pretty. And then you can see the little bumblebee there. You can see the honeycomb there. And my other little bumblebee. These are kind of thin. That's my own, these are thin. They're, they feel small and thin, but let's... Let's see, let's do the others. Already I can see, I added that glass, I can see that I'm going to have to sand that down. I don't know if you can see how that glass stood up. I 
Okay. Oh, I do like that. I do like that. nice when I take them outside to do the actual mock-up photos. Okay, and there's the bumblebee. There's that bumblebee that we dusted with the gold powder. So, okay, we're in business. So now we just need to finish these off, go in and make sure there are no sharp edges. When I first started this, I would hand sand these down. Now I use this absolutely fabulous thing called a deburring tool and this swivels. This is like really nice because it swivels but it's got a little blade and you just run it along the edge. And you can just trim away. So, the one thing that I did say I need to do is the glass on this, because the resin was just about set when I added the glass to it, that glass stands up. Let me get up and walk around. And there, now you can see the glass. You can see that the glass is too high. So I'm going to have to use my sander and just sand that down. So that'll be a minute. And of course, anytime you're sanding, you need to have um, on protective gear so that that dust doesn't go up your nose or get into your eyes. And I'm using my battery operated sander for this. And we're just going to put this bad boy right here. And I always use the vacuum hose because that helps keep the dust down. Okay, I don't think that sanded that the way I want, so I'm going to use my Dremel tool.
use my alcohol wipe just to wipe off any dust. Now the only thing about these is they are awfully light, They're very thin. To finish up, I always put my 3M rubber bumps on the back. Uh, these prevent the container from possibly scratching the furniture, but more importantly, they keep this from sliding. For those people who tell you to put cork on the back, cork is fine except cork will dry out and when it dries out, it starts to get brittle and then it gets crumbly and it will fall off. The other part about that is um, if it gets wet, it's just nasty. So I'm gonna take these outside and do my photos and we'll see.